feeling. I won't need any wings on that airplane getting back to Dallas. Mm. Well, that's how I felt. I was flying in my bedroom last night, like I was just flying around, bumping off the walls because I could not believe what I had just seen. It was a little hard to process because my, my first takeaway was, if Ezekiel Elliott, after he made the play of the year in the NFL, to me, the hurdle. It would have been oh. had he scored. Okay, I agree with you. But he, if he had kept his balance, it would have been the play of the year. He just couldn't cap it off. Who'd he leap? Uh, Trey Sullivan. Mm-hmm. Just awesome. went right over the top of him. We know Zeke was a high school hurdle champion in, in <laughs> Missouri. And yet, if he had stayed on his feet, that would have been four points more because they couldn't cash. Right. They only got a field goal out of that. And obviously, speaking of field goals, my kicker has gone south again. He missed another field goal. So do I trust him going forward? I do not. Is it possible they would replace him this week? I don't know. Once they go south, they usually just stay south to me. So I'm not sure about that. And the other reason this game is so hard to play. But he was so bad in stretches last night. And then he was so so great in stretches last night that it's sort of hard to put it all together and say, what just happened? Because I saw Dak Prescott be the driving force, the playmaking driving force of three long touchdown scoring drives that were reminiscent to me of 2016 and early 2017. Right. Because he went eight plays, 75 yards, touchdown. Nine plays, 75 yards, touchdown. Eight plays, 75 yards, touchdown. And the last two came virtually all in the fourth quarter when you're – you're in a scoring match. You're in a shootout. Effectively, it went from a defensive struggle to a shootout in the fourth quarter with Carson Wentz. And they, they converted eight of 16 third downs, and five of those were via pass from Dak Prescott, who looked so pathetic sometimes and so clutch and on target other times. Again, I give you that Zeke finally had some holes. It was by far the best the offensive line has played all year. And guess what? What do I been pounding the table? We got to get Connor Williams, the rookie, out of left guard. He's a liability. He's the weak link. Well, God bless him. I'm knocking on wood for him. He was hurt, so he couldn't play, and I don't even know who this guy is. Xavier Suafilo came in and played left guard. And you know what? The beauty of him playing left guard is not once last night did I say, we're, you know what, he just got beat. Right. I don't think he got beaten all night. I don't have a coach's right. tape, but, but again, the offensive line was actually opening some holes for Ezekiel Elliott. They were skipping, but here's the thing. When you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, they play what we call a wide nine with the cowboy front. Well, it's, it's uh, Jim Schwartz's defense. Yes. Yeah. It is meant to p- get pressure on the quarterback. They line them up a little wide, they angle them in, they and you're do. trying to get home on the quarterback. They, they were hitting the splits, man. Right, but you leave lanes in which yep. you can get creased, and that's what they we were saw. getting creased. And that's why you see the 35, the 32, 18, mm-hmm. the double-digit yards that yep. Zeke was getting on the carries. Um, I was surprised that they stayed it, but that's the defense that they play. Skip, they're not the same defense as some some point in time you have to realize you're not the you're not hunting you're the hunted hmm. last year doesn't it's not the same you're not the underdog everybody is measuring their success by beating you because they get to tell the team we just that's a good football team that's the defending super bowl mm-hmm. champs so it gives them hope we've seen this before because we see them have big leads and we should have known this from their defense we saw this against tennessee have a big lead skip on the road, Mm -hmm. they give it up. They had a lead against Carolina, they give it up. So we should see that this is not the same defense as what we saw last year. Um, They can't run the football. They're asking Carson to go back and throw the ball as many times, what, 44 times? I believe that's a bit too much, Skip. Only 16 rush attempts. Last year, you know, when you had Blunt, you had a Jai. You could run the ball. You could control the time of possession. I think they lost time of possession by seven minutes. And when you allow the Cowboys Mm -hmm. to run the ball like they did, because, Skip, if you look at it, Dak was throwing the ball, yeah, but guys were wide open. He was throwing in the open doors. Those those weren't contested throws. Look at Cole Beasley. Look at Coop. Look at Hearns. Look at those guys catching the ball, Skip. They were wide open. Those are easy throws because you're throwing against man coverage. There's no disguising it. He knows. I I saw a lot of plays where there were not easy throws, where he's got people in his face, and he's on his back foot, and he's looking a little gun shy, and he's looking double clutch hesitant. Well, yeah, he's he's clutching the ball, but here's the thing, Skip. Having people in your face and knowing the guy that you're throwing to is wide open is something different than having a guy in your face and having to throw into a a, a small window. But give that credit. He hung in there. He made the plays that he needed to make. But I want, like I said, I'm happy 
Because guess what? Next week, mm -hmm. next week is a different game. Yep. Yep. So before we get to next week, I'm staying on this week because <laughs> my guy Dak Prescott showed me once again what Jerry Jones loves about him. It's why he said after the Washington debacle, mm. when Dak threw for 120 yards in the fourth quarter, and, and in spite of the turnover that he just gave them seven points in the end zone, Jerry Jones says, I can win a lot of games with that man playing quarterback that way. Mm. Last night, he showed me so much on the road against the defending champs because I'll be the first to admit it. There were times when he just looked overmatched. Mm -hmm. He looked like a quarterback whose confidence was almost completely shot. And you know what happens at that position? Once you lose it, you just completely go n n like Nathan Peterman right. loses it, right? <laughs> where, where you've just lost all faith. I don't know faith. if Peterman ever had it. I don't think he ever had it. He might have been pit. I don't know. Yeah. But, but the point is, last night it looked like he was about to completely lose faith in himself. And then he would just fight back and make big throws. Mm -hmm. And the biggest throw of the night to me, if we could see it, was third and eight at the Philly 32, and the game is tied in the fourth quarter, and they throw kitchen sink at him. They all came, and they don't blitz very much, but they decided, let's just all go after him on this play, and this is the throw you said to Alan Hearns yeah. when he's wide open. Well, this is the throw he's been missing. Yeah. This is the one you got to stand tall. you got to stand strong in the pocket and look to hot and hit hot, and he hit him, and it, it's like what Tom Brady is best at. Brady, The reason Brady didn't get blitz is because he'll usually just stand right, right. up and throw that ball that way. So that was the key play because if he misses that throw, it's a tie game right. and the Eagles going to reseize momentum and go the other way. I don't know what the, Jen, I don't know what the corner was thinking. When was the last time the guy runs the route and he stutters at the line of scrimmage? Mm. Normally, when he stutters in a situation like that, you know the ball's got to come out quick. Yeah, got so, to. So as soon as he stutters, you run through it. Yep. But don't worry about it. I mean, and then you let the guy inside. You don't let the guy inside when you're coming with an all out blitz. And he's obviously the hot receiver and he's the only hope. And he hit him for 23 yards, and all of a sudden, Dallas is in business. They're big time business. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I get what you're talking about, Skip, because there are some throws on third down. I'm like, that. Kobe's is wide open. How are you going to ground that one? Or the guy was wide open. How do you miss a throw like that? It's, it's those throws that keep you on track, that keep you on target. And the thing, we're going to talk about this later, the thing that Tennessee did against Tom Brady is that on third down, they got him off the field. They did. So in situations like this, if you're an offense, on third down, you're okay. trying to stay on the field to get three more cracks at him. Okay. Get three more cracks at him. And so that early on, Skip, I agree with you. He was not as sharp as he needed to be. But give him credit. To his credit, he found a way to stay composed hmm. and make the throws he down did. the stretch. He's he's got football courage to me. He will fight with you. Yes. He, he is. He's got that gamer in him. And yet we talked about eight of sixteen third down conversions. That's and a lot I did of not. Downs. That's a lot of third downs. It's a lot of time of possession. Yes. And yet, we didn't talk about the one fourth down conversion, which came fourth and two at Dallas's 31-yard line to Jason Garrett's credit. And I call him Coach Clap. He is coaching, I think, for his coaching life. No, you, you can make that call, Skip Bayless, when you know the owner's in your corner. You tell me the guy that's on the hot seat that's going to make that play. At that juncture of the game. Well, if there's it's been a lot written and reported. Even yesterday morning, there was a lot of reports about Lincoln Riley is on the front burner for Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones, how much they love him. Yeah, yeah but they love they are, uh, And you hear Cleveland saying the same thing. Okay. But here's the thing, Skip. In a situation like that, at that point of the game, in the second quarter, on your own 31, no coach, not even Coach Belichick, is going for that. Not even Sean Payton. You know what? I got to do what Coach Clap does. I got to coach for yeah. Coach yeah. Clap for Coach Clap, right? Two How about that? Yeah. Two things. He knows he's he knows he's good. And what did the owner say? The owner said, "Well, you know, hey, you should have gone for it." And so now that was in he, overtime at Houston, and he was going to go for it again, Skip. But Lyle Collins jumped outside. He was going to go for it again on fourth he down. He was. But that was just going for it. Yeah. This was a fake punt. This yeah. is snapping it to your safety, Jeff Heath, and there was no hole. Yeah. I, I thought it was stymied, and he just said, "I'm going to pile drive it. Yeah. I'm just going to lower my head, and I'm going to run through the wall." Mm -hmm. And he did. What on? He's like Jerry. Yeah. You told me to go for it on fourth down. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing what you told me to do. I mean, that Jerry coaching from a distance. I you think so? Did. Yeah, you know. Well, it worked. Yeah. Because he was coaching desperate. He was coaching to win instead of not to lose. Yeah. I got to give him that. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. That doesn't go those wins and losses. doesn't go in Jerry's resume. So right now, Jerry is 0-0. Okay. He lose that game. That's on. All right. And everybody's talking crazy. Like, why would Jason go for it on his own 31? Because Jerry told him to.
So the other coach that I have to laud and applaud today is Scott Linehan. Mm -hmm. I have called for his job many times on this show. There was a report yesterday morning that he was on the hot seat to the point that during the bye, they strongly considered relieving him of his duties and replacing him. And I thought he was very good last night. I thought he came up with nice little big play calls that I hadn't seen from him all year. Just little rollout passes, the rollout pass to Zeke for mm -hmm. the touchdown. They, they were just fairly inspired. Again, his, his measuring stick is way low for me, but I thought he called a pretty good game. And he, he tried a quarterback draw with Dak, which I've been pounding the table for. It didn't work, but at least he tried it. I thought he tried several little big things that, that made me say, okay, maybe they got a chance with him going forward. Like he pulled his head out. You can get real creative and real exotic when you can run the ball like Zeke was running at last night's camp. It helps. But yet, that Zeke Elliott last night, I still don't think he's in great shape. And I still don't think he has the speed that I saw in 2016 mm -hmm. because on his longest run of the night, 35 yards, mm -hmm. Malcolm Jenkins just ran him down and ran him out of bounds and knocked the ball out of his hands. So d d I don't know that he had the creases, he had the holes. There's one read option where, where Dak just said, go, and there's just nobody home on the left side of the, of the line. He just ran with it. Yeah. Like, it, it, does he run hard when there's not much there? I, I'll give you that. But in, in 2016, he was making people miss, and I'm not seeing that guy yet. So, so again, I'm, I'm not putting these guys back on any throne. I still think it's going to be... Very difficult. Very difficult. Not, vir not, not going to impossible. say virtually impossible, but it's going to be very difficult. But, again, the one anchor to this team is the defense. And the reason I was so disillusioned after Monday night was Marcus Mariota went 11 of 14 on third down against that defense. Mm. I think it was overconfident coming off the bye. I don't think it took Mariota seriously, and I'm not sure maybe that the Patriots took him that seriously. Mm. And now he's played three straight high-level games. He barely lost to your Chargers, mm -hmm. 20 to 19, but had a high QBR. Right. And then obviously Dallas and New England, that's that's pretty good because Dallas came in the number one ranked defense, and yesterday they looked more like the number one ranked defense. And I was flat out wrong about Leighton Vander Esch. I wanted DJ Moore, and I still love DJ Moore, yeah. but I didn't know enough about him. I told you I'd watch two um, Boise, State. Boise State games, barely, where I was just kind of half watching for various reasons, for looking at somebody else. Right. And I think one was a Josh Allen. That's right. why I was watching. It was for Josh Allen. Yeah. And, and so he never leaped off my screen where I said, wow, look at that like guy. Like Rokon Smith that, from oh, Georgia. He oh, leaps, he like, after the semifinal, I said, that guy is <laughs> it, man. Yeah. But this guy is long, and he's rangy, and he's fast, and he can hit on the run. And he seems to have fairly rare instinct and anticipation. He's big, too, Skip. He's, he's, he's more like Erlacher. Yeah, he's, he's, he's that big, he's oh, a 6'4", 255 yeah. guy that can run. And, and here's the thing, Skip. This is why it looks even more valuable. Because you talked about a lot last year and in years past when Sean Lee goes down, the defense seems, seems to lose a lot. They never had an adequate replacement. Well, not only have they found the replacement, I feel very comfortable and said, I don't really know if Sean Lee is going to be back next year. You could be right about that. And after the, last night, and again, I may be overreacting off just one night, but I thought, gee, I, I don't know if Sean Lee needs to be back in the lineup the way wow. he played last or night, because that was spectacular. Or if he is back, he's back at a reduced sure. rate yeah. no. and reduced playing time. Now he will be the backup. And Vander Esch will be the starter. Well, again, Sean Lee's got this terminally pulled hamstring. It just pulls like every other play. Yeah, but that's that's an imbalance somewhere. Something is off scale. But yeah, you can't keep pulling hamstrings like that. I don't know. So, am I crowning them? No. Because here we go you. to Atlanta, then it's Washington, then it's New Orleans, then it's Philadelphia again. I, I don't know. And those Saints. No. Yeah. Oh, come come marching in. You're going to love that. Yeah, one. Oh, we got to do on that one. Mm. I'm just happy you're happy. Mm. It's, it's I'm my I'm very Monday. happy. Thank you, Jenny. Come in, ready yeah. to go. Okay. The jersey's back. I'm not okay. real happy that you said Tom Brady looks old, but yeah. we'll it talk is. about that. I Call a pass and fell down. We're going to talk yeah. about that. I don't know if you're going to stay happy mm. here, but how will you defend your guy, Tom Brady? That was a blowout Can't loss. It didn't look good. Mm. We'll just